hello, welcome to Literary Life, and welcome to today's video, which is a review of the book, The Many Daughters of a Fong Moy. This is by Jamie Ford. Um, for those of you new to the channel, welcome. This is going to be a spoiler-free review. I'll first explain what the book's about while I also talk about my reactions to it and my review, and then I'll also explain why I gave it the rating I do. Um, so The Many Daughters of a Fong Moy was really interesting because it was based on this concept of transgenerational drama. I had not heard of this specific, um, I don't know if it's a theory because it's actually been proven, but the author himself has a little intro for the reader where he kind of explains how he'd heard about this, read about it, and it really just intrigued him and inspired him to write the book. So the concept of transgenerational trauma, and this is, I googled it after I read the author's intro, and there is a lot of reputable um, scientific communities that are talking about it. Harvard was one, I mean, several in the UK as well as the US. So this is now pretty well agreed upon and established. And this is really where they've determined that it is d definitively not a case of nature versus nurture, but it is uh, a, really a case of both, but with the component of trauma can be passed down through genetics. Now, this was what was interesting. So they found that it's not that for those of you that are familiar with DNA and genetics, it's not that the sequence of your DNA changes due to the experiences, but how those are expressed um, is impacted, and that can then be inherited by your child um, and continue on and on and on. So this whole concept really blew my mind, and it was so intriguing to say, see the way the author took it in this book and brought us through six generations of women um, to show us how they experienced transgenerational trauma that they inherited and how it played out in their life. But he also played a little bit with that and added in, I would say, a component of magical realism where we're going to see how the woman actually will have moments of being in touch um, with each other, have moments of almost like a a uh, witness of another period of time, for example, like a crossing over, which is also inspired by a scientific method that I'll explain in a moment that is definitely fictional, at least as far as I'm aware of. <laughs> All right, so what's going to happen? I'm going to start with the character, the woman that goes back most in time, and I'll bring you forward. Um, we are first going to meet a Fong. So she is around the time period of 1836. And she is actually based on the first Chinese woman to actually set foot in America. In the book, uh, Afong is that woman. We're going to hear a lot about her experience because essentially she is enslaved as a performer. So, you know, people are fascinated by her. They're fascinated by her um, customs, her appearance, her, her language, the way she speaks. But it's really not in a respectful way. It's more, it reminded me more of like in a circus performance kind of way. And we're going to see her experience of being treated this way, um, the way that she is not, you know, really uh, given the respect and the value that she deserves, how people will profit off of her. From there, we're going to go to Lai King, who is in the 1890s, early 1890s. So she's going to be in a situation, I think it was in China, where uh, a plague is going to hit. It's referred to as the Black Death, and her family is going to be quarantined. And we're going to see the trauma that she experiences associated with the deaths of the village, the impact on herself and her own family um, as she's living under a significant, significant plague condition. From there, we're going to meet Zoe, who is in the 1920s, late 1920s, about 1927. She is a student, and she's at England. Um, and what's really fascinating is she is attending this school that essentially has no rules. And it was really neat to see kind of the way, not kind of, the way that it played out with the kids, the way that school was structured, how the kids reacted to it and responded to it in different ways. Um, and it's really more of a democracy. There is a lot of voting where the students have um, equal voice. And even just seeing the way the teachers um, behaved at the school, how they could comp um, you know, comprise their lessons. And uh, it, was it was really interesting. It was more like open platform. You know, I'm here for art. If you're interested, those that are, I'm here for math, the sciences, all of those things. Uh, so we're going to meet Zoe there. And the school is going to undergo, I'm going to call it like a, 
uh, in, innovative project. And that's where some of Zoe's own experiences that are really going to become the highlight of her life um, are really going to be brought to the forefront. After Zoe, um, and just to let you guys know, the book is going to jump back and forth between these, these women um, or female children. So do track for yourself just a list of the characters and who each one is. That definitely helped me. Um, I'm just taking you through them in sequential order. Uh, so after that, we will meet a, a war nurse by the name of Faye. This is in the 1940s. We're going to basically see uh, what her experience is like, you know, both as a single woman, um, as well as a nurse during a major world war. Here, I feel like is really where we get the first strong component of magical realism, where she is going to briefly meet a patient who is just going to resonate with her. And there's going to be some indication of there being like a, it almost reminded me of like a past life connection. Um, so this is really, I think, where the magical realism, at least to me, started to layer itself into the book. And I think that adds a really unique twist on it as well that I found very intriguing. After Faye, we're going to meet a woman by the name of Greta, who is a tech executive at 2014, in the period of 2014, very successful woman, um, who is going to become the parent of Dorothy. Um, now, before I move forward, I did forget to say, all of these women are related. Again, we're talking about transgenerational trauma. So we are going through all of the descendants um, from a, a Fong on to her great, 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 I didn't count them all, but um, grandchild Dorothy, who's going to take us to the final period of 2045. Now, Dorothy, I feel like, is really a rooted character. This is like um, the woman that we're going to spend a lot of time with and really get to see how everything has come through her and really has landed in and impacted all this transgenerational trauma, both herself and her own daughter, Annabelle. Dorothy's in a situation where her marriage has some significant issues, um, and she's trying to juggle her own mental health issues, her concern for her daughter, as well as this um, pretty significant marital um, conflict she's experiencing. Uh, this is where we're going to get into there is a new type of research that's being offered that has um, been found in the book. I believe this is purely fictional, has been found in the book to be very successful at helping people that are experiencing anxiety that has not been treated successfully by the traditional therapies and pharmaceuticals available. So they have found that they give them this injection. And essentially what they're doing is they're connecting them with that transgenerational trauma. It'll come in um, via visual, auditory, full-on memories that's almost like they're there. Um, and through those experiences, they're able to work out that trauma resolve it and the anxiety will subside. And that's the theory of the book. So a very, very fascinating, um, fascinating storyline. I thought it was very creative, very inventive, easy to read. I was entertained the whole way through the book. Um, so this is a book that for me was a four star read. I give every book one to five stars. Four stars means I think it's a great book. I loved it and I'm going to recommend it to most people. For those of you that are interested, this book is going in my Macari shop. Link is down below, or you can just order a new copy. I have a couple links down below for that as well. Um, so that is it for this review. If you have read this book, as always, let me know your thoughts, um, or if you end up reading it, come back and let me know your thoughts. I always love hearing the different reactions people have to books, so it's very fun, and I think it's great to see that there are diversity in our experiences. Um, so that is it for today. Thank you, as always, for watching. Now, let's go read some books. Happy reading.